Hello and you're very welcome to the Jamma Podcast. I'm John Mann. Of course, the podcast brought to you by orgaretcha.com. Use the code Jamma Podcast to get 15% off on our website. Loads of new gear just in time for the new year. So get your hands on the gear and the website. And today I'm joined by former Down Footballer, uh, John Clark, to talk about his illustrious career with the Down Footballers. Obviously, his, his club and um, Down current state of affairs. And obviously, uh, Down got the first win in the Kenny Cup during the week as well. So uh, I'm assuming the celebrations are still ongoing, John. <laughs> oh, no celebrations in down for winning the McKenna Cup game. But I hey, know there's a, there's a lot of positivity about and it's, it's a great start for the lads and the team to get up and running. Uh, 2022 was a really difficult year. So to start off 2023 with a win is encouraging right away. Hmm. I suppose how's things yourself, John? Uh, obviously, we are just over Christmas, well, I suppose about a week or two away from Christmas now. So how did you get over it? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was it was quiet, but busy with a family. I had four wee ones, including twin boys, so uh, it, was, it was busy to say the least, but uh, all good and, and back to reality now this week. So uh, January is always hard to get going, but uh, it's good to be back into some sort of routine again. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. I suppose, how did you maybe enjoy the downtime, obviously, because obviously I know obviously being, I know obviously you're taking over the clubs and obviously media work throughout the year. So suppose, how did you, maybe, did you enjoy the downtime? Yeah, I did. No, listen, the, the, the club season finished up probably in October and down there for myself and I enjoyed the, the, the couple of months off and it was nice to sort of uh, to, be, to be at home a wee bit more and, and, and relax. Uh, obviously still busy with work, but it was good, you know, so raring to go now and, and looking forward to getting started for, for, for the new season again uh, fairly soon. Good stuff, John. Good stuff. Suppose obviously news in the last couple of months. Obviously, Connor Lafferty, former teammate of yours, has gone on and uh, took over the Down Senior Footballers. Obviously, it's a great incentive for the Down lads to kind of buy into his new project, and it's probably very exciting. Hopefully, times for Down once again, because obviously Down is such a proud, rich tradition football up there, John. So it's um, no better man than Connor Lafferty to get the fire going again. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, it's been a difficult couple of years in, in down, and uh, I definitely think Connor's appointment uh, alongside the backroom team that, that includes my own brother Marty. I think it's it's a great appointment, and the lads have been been flat out at it since probably October time. And by all accounts, now there, there, there's been a real good buy-in from, from from most of the players. And for once in down, there, there there's a air of optimism and positivity heading into a new season, whereas in possible previous years, it, there's been a lot of doom and gloom. So. You know, the down public can be quite fickle at times, but uh, I think that there's a lot of positivity out there. And I think Connor is the man for the job at the minute. He, obviously, people say he might be a bit young and experienced, but, you know, there's no better man that knows down football over the past probably 10 or 15 years. In my opinion, he's probably the best club player ever to come out of down. Um, if players can't buy in or be up to play under Connor, there's something badly wrong. So, yeah, I, I think it's going to be an exciting year ahead. Things won't happen overnight, but I, I think it's definitely going to be a step in the right direction for down uh, this upcoming season. I suppose, John, how would you kind of look back on the 2022 season for down, maybe the last couple of years? I suppose, what maybe do you feel, I suppose, maybe went wrong? I know, obviously, like a lot of the media and the press kind of coming out of the down camp probably wasn't overly positive, but I suppose, what would you maybe put it down to maybe over maybe the last two or three years for down football? I think the, the the main problem was the, I'll always argue that Down will always produce good footballers capable of challenging for titles. But in recent years, you know, there's been a real sort of lethargic approach from maybe a lot of players that they maybe didn't want to be involved in the county setup. They'd rather stay with their clubs and they just opted out. And it, it, that, that was no reflection on the lads who, who, who put the shifts in the past two or three years. You know, it was very difficult, but I, I, I think that the, the, the best panel and best team wasn't available to James McCartan and Paddy Talley at different stages. You know, that, that, that was a big factor and, and hopefully Connor he has, by all accounts, got the majority of players he wants on board. And if they can go in the right direction, they can certainly have an impact. But listen, it was, it's been a difficult couple of years. You, you felt sorry for James McCartan there last year. He stepped in when nobody else wanted the job and he was going to be up against it right away. And it, it was a... It was a really difficult year and, uh, you know, down possibly were a laughing stock maybe last year at stages throughout the length and breadth of Ireland. And that, and that was hard to take, you know, down or a proud county who you'd always seem to be want to compete at, at national league level and championship level. But last year at stages, it seemed to be be harder to get off the down team than it was to get on it, you know. So that was a reflection on, on the whole, on the whole probably around the county a lot of doom and gloom so hopefully that's a line drawn under that and, and things can, can can move on in the right direction from, from here on 
I suppose kind of looking at last year, John, obviously it, it probably was a very, very tough year for down football. And obviously I know kind of players are coming in and out and, you know, the training weekend and everything kind of went with that, John. But I suppose overall, when you can look back to the 2022 year and obviously hope springs a turn for 2023 now. But, you know, what way would you kind of look back maybe on the last year or two for down football? Yeah, challenging, you know, to say to say the least. And uh, in my opinion, down down probably aren't a division three team, but it's they are where they are for a reason. And it's uh, it's, it's probably the main objective of, of, of this year's setup is to get out of division three as soon as possible. And listen, it'll be no easy feat. I've been there myself in the past where we've been down there, and it's been it's been a real battle to get out of it. So if down can get out of three this year, and it'll be a real step in the right direction. But Again, it comes back to, you know, the, the down public can be quite fickle at times. But when things are going bad, uh, they make it out to be worse than it really is. And when things are going well, sometimes they set you up in a pedestal for a fall. But it's just, again, the nature of the basin down. They're, they're a mad footballing county and people want to see the team going well. So I would say the last couple of years has, has been as difficult as it's been in a long time, you know. So hopefully lessons can be learned on, on, on all sides from that. Because mm, there is so much talent in John, uh, talent in down John, like little bit like so many star studied players, and like I know obviously like, the, the dream is probably to really start seeing some of the cool boys come in and use their talent within the squad. But I suppose like when there is so many talented footballers within the county, John, and obviously you're a down great kind of look at looking on, it, like you really do want to see the best for down football. I don't know about doing great now, John, but... Uh, well, I put... <laughs> thanks for the compliment. Oh, yes, so absolutely. You know, I, I played for Down for 10 years and throughout that time, you know, there was plenty of downs and, and we had tough times and tough, tough challenges, but there was lots of good days as well. You know, you look back to the 2003 Ulster final and probably one that got away, the 2010 All-Ireland final, and we had some big wins in between, but there was a lot of inconsistency uh, during those years as well. And, you know, I, I felt, in a way, I felt for the players last year that what they were going through, it, it was really tough. Um, again, the as I say, the town public can be quite unforgiving at times, but uh, I, I still feel that, as you say, there is always good footballers in down, and no better man than, than Conor Lavery to try and get the best out of them and, and get the county back up to where they could be. Kilku are, are the standard setters and down have been for 10, 12 years now. Uh, and, and he has been the main man driving that in fairness. So hopefully he can have that impact uh, in the down senior setup. And won't happen overnight, but you'd hope within two or three years down can be back. Hopefully challenging in Ulster finals and who knows, possibly all Ireland finals. I suppose, uh, John, what did you make maybe of the sound of maybe, I know obviously Kiku, Kiku boys are very open and honest in some of their interviews, but maybe what did you make of some of the sound bites kind of coming from them interviews? Like, obviously, I like, got, got a lot of negative press, but you're kind of thinking if you want to see the betterment of town football, you know, lads should really start kind of, you know, praising the work that's going on. Yeah, uh, I know there was a lot of talk at that stage and, and Kiku are very much, uh, nothing really ever gets out from it, but maybe Eugene at the time, maybe he was misquoted and maybe he was a wee bit naive in what he said in the press, maybe made a bigger deal out of it uh, than it really was. You know, I don't think he was having a real go at, at the current down setup. It was maybe just the way he worded it, but it, it probably didn't go down well in certain parts. But uh, I, I think, you know, there's definitely four or five of them Kiku lads, if they buy into the down setup, can have a huge impact. On, on, on the whole on the whole thing and, and, and push it on from their experience alone over the past few years and, and they would add a real buzz and energy to, 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 to the whole place. Hmm. I suppose John can look ahead to this year 2023 as I said a couple of seconds ago you know hope does spring eternal and obviously you re everyone is really looking for a big bounce from uh, Connor Lafferty and obviously your brother uh, Marty you know better men to kind of get the uh, ship uh, going in the right direction John so I suppose looking forward to the year ahead. Yeah, no, no, definitely, and and they did start well the other night with with a positive performance down down in Monaghan. So, uh, yes, the McKenna Cup will be will be used as a as a sort of building block towards the National League and the Tipperary away match at the end of January is, is really one that that they will be end up if they can get off to a good start down there and really build some momentum going into the league and and, and hopefully gain promotion out of it. And it'll give them a real bounce going into to the Ulster Championship uh, first round game against Donegal, which is probably early May, late April time. So, listen, it, 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 it will be exciting times, hopefully, and it's something that the down public have been craving for in recent years, a team that they can really get behind and, and, and be excited about. So, yeah, looking forward to getting a few of the games this year now and, and, and seeing what, 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 what style of play and what systems that the, the lads are going to implement. 
I suppose kind of brings it back to the whole point, John. I know obviously people like at times I wouldn't say maybe make a mockery of the mechanic up, but I think the mechanic up for the likes of the Cav and Antrims and even Downs to kind of get that bit of form. And obviously, I think it's very important for Down this year because the build blocks, the build momentum, the win the other night was good. So I think counties really need to start kind of you know getting in behind it because it can really be a bit of a confidence boost, especially this time of year. No, it, it can be, you know, and I know from experience myself, if you've, uh, you know, it was always hard maybe to get excited about Mechanic mechanical Cup games, but if, if you've had a couple of good mechanical Cup games, it, it's really going to stand you going into the league and particularly for lads coming into the panel, if they can set a marker down early and put their hand up for Connor and Martin and them to take notice of, you know, that the, they're going to be in the shake-up c- come the National League. So I think the mechanical Cup uh, has, has come back this year with, 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 a, a, with a buzz about it and, it's an important stepping stone for them counties that you mentioned there. Maybe the likes of the Thrones of this world maybe don't need to take it as serious, but certainly for for, for, for maybe teams like Down this year, it, it's all about building performance and building the wee bit of confidence heading towards the start of the league. I suppose, John, what kind of players are we talking about this year that can, you know, get down football going again? And obviously, I know we've seen, talk, we've talked with Kilku boys and obviously some of the main steers within the down, kind of, uh, down squad. But like, what kind of players are we looking at, you know, this year to keep an eye on from the down end of things? Yeah, there, there's probably a few lads. There's a couple of lads back on board. Uh, Niall Donnelly and Shay Miller, who featured in the 2017 run. So them lads that had a wee bit of uh, craft and experience. And you, you have a serious amount of energy and pace for some of the young lads. You have Pierce Lavery there, you have Barry O'Hagan, obviously still about. Andrew Gilmore from my own club, St John's. It, it, it was on the radar last year. He's back this year and he'll he'll be a real threat up front. He likes a Shane Annett there in midfield. Listen, there, there, there's an endless list of players who probably won't jump out with the page of people outside of down, but people who have been watching club football and down will know about these lads and hopefully they can bring a real pace and a real energy and freshness till they till the state of play that, that Connor's trying to implement. Yeah, and I suppose it, it kind of makes a big difference getting lads back and buying into kind of a system again. And I suppose that'll you know, create a bit of a buzz around the county again that is definitely needed, John. No, it is. You know, as, as I stated earlier, there that there has been a real sort of doom and gloom around the Down senior team now for, 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 for maybe two or three years. And, you know, winning creates a, a sort of bit of momentum and builds that bit of buzz. And, you know, you want to see a, a packed park Esther again come championship Sundays. And, you know, there's no better place, even the National League Saturday night games under lights. Newry is a special atmosphere. So it's all about getting the public back and getting them back in the team. And I think I think that'll happen. I suppose, Sean, you were obviously like part and parcel of the, like a down team in the early noughties and obviously getting to an all Ireland final in 2010. I suppose, well, like when you are involved in a county setup and when things are good, things are good. When things are bad, obviously that can can have a bit of an effect on you, everyone around you, nearly. So, I suppose when you're when you are going through hard times in a county team, it can't be easy. No, it's not. It's it's very difficult. And as you said, you know, down is a, is a mad GA public, and it's hard to avoid it at times. You know, and if you're out and about and at the end of the day, people, the players are amateurs and, you know, it's hard if you're, if you're coming off the back of a, of, a, of a good win, yes, you get the plaudits, but it's you, you have to sort of stand up and take criticism at times too and people do want to talk and ask questions and that, that, that can be difficult, you know, but I'm sure Connor has you no know, better place than Cuckoo to sort of keep things, keep a lid on things and I'm sure the lads are not be getting carried away by, by wins or not be getting too, too down by defeats, but Listen, it's 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 hard to avoid it at times, no matter what club the players are from, what towns are from. You know, there's always going to be talk and expectation around uh, county players, and there's always going to be that expectation that comes with it. I suppose we've kind of seen kind of players in the last couple of years, obviously maybe Mark Poland and Benny Coulter and maybe some players that probably from your opinion, obviously you did play with these gents. Like, do you maybe feel they, maybe Benny and maybe uh, maybe Mark Poland were like, did you think maybe they entered the time a tad bit early or do you feel maybe the time was right for them? Because I think at the time maybe it was a bit premature and they could have offered a bit more, but I suppose what would be your maybe opinion? Yeah, listen, possibly, you know, I, I know Benny was stepped down when, when, when Jim McCurry was on board and I, I know Benny quite well and he was probably of the opinion that stage that he could have maybe given another year or two if he was managed correctly you know and it, it just didn't work out the same maybe with Mark you know he just felt maybe that he needed maybe to be treated slightly different regarding his age but listen it's 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 a hard one you know you're, you're trying to blood new players but uh, it, it does all come down to, to, to man management and, and getting the best out of players. Absolutely, John. I suppose obviously, um, with uh, with uh, down football itself, and like we've we've seen kind of remarkable, remarkable um players in the past. And obviously, later with later with so much talent, we've seen kind of Kale Mooney kind of doing interviews in the past, and I suppose he'd be a great man to you know get on board again this year. 
No, definitely. I'm not sure. I know Caelan's recovering from 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 injury at the minute, you know. But uh, again, he's he's a serious athlete on his day, serious player, a man that uh, is probably the fastest player in Ireland on his day if, if he wanted to be, you know. So there was maybe question marks over Caelan's attitude at stages maybe last year. So listen, I would say Caelan will be involved at some stage, and uh, if his attitude's right, he, he can be a massive player for for Down still over the next year or two. Mr. Lafferty, John, obviously we kind of remarked on him at the start and no better man to kind of bring in to kind of get, as you said, get the ship in the right direction again. So what is it about Connor? Obviously, John, you would have played with him for many years. What is it about him? Yeah, you know, Connor just lives for football. Uh, he, he he knows and he has done for years the ins and outs of down football. Very, very clever, clever football, clever person, you know. But in, in saying that as well, Connor, there's no better man for having a better crack. Bit of uh, team spirit about. He, he he's full of devilment at times, and I think the lads are really buy into that. You know, he he has personality. He he will have good man management skills. Uh, he's still playing himself, so he know about the modern day player, what they need, what they want. So all in all, you know, I I just think at the minute it's a perfect fit for for for, for down football. And obviously, your brother Marty gone in with uh, Connor Jones. Was what can Marty bring to the fold? Yeah, listen, Marty and Connor have linked up well with, with the under twenties in recent years, and and Marty comes with a with a huge experience in his background as well. Obviously, coming from from Australian rules and his his, his down career as well, so he he'll have the respect of the players there as well. And again, he's a deep thinker about the match, about the games, and uh, he he'll bring a lot to the table there in that setup as well. Absolutely, absolutely. I suppose, like, from an outsider looking in, it looks like there's so much kind of goes into management and coaching, and obviously preparing a kind of county team would like would it be something you'd be interested in yourself in a few years' time. Listen, yeah, I, I, I'm involved with with, with, with Anna Clone now at Club and Down this year. I did two years with, with Dundrum there recently over the past two seasons, and I know the challenges that, that management brings. It's a it's a different sort of mindset to to, to playing. You, you're very much concerned about yourself when you're playing, but. It, it sort of consumes you when you're managing and, and trying to work different players and coach different players, but very, very enjoyable, you know. So, you listen, who knows down the line? I, I'm always quite an ambitious person. I would I like to be involved in, in a county setup in a few years? You, you can't rule it out, you know, and particularly with uh, with, with Down having still such passion for, for, for Down football. But, you know, I'm, I'm cutting my teeth at the minute at, at that club level, enjoying that and looking forward to, to the challenges that come with, with Anna Clone for the 2023 season. Brilliant stuff, John. Brilliant stuff. I suppose, kind of remarking on to yourself, obviously, your playing days, John, and obviously, you got the ball rolling in the early noughties, so one for down. So, I suppose, looking back, John, it's um, just 22 years ago now. So, how's it feel to look back on it at this stage? Yeah, I know it's quite scary when you when you think about it. You know, it's it seems like yesterday as, as well. You know, making my debut as a, as a teenager against Calvin, actually in Kingston Park. So, uh, yeah, it 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 was a was a really big moment in, in, in my sporting career. You know, but time just goes so fast. You know, and looking back, great memories. As I said earlier, in a ten year career, I had plenty of bad days. You know, personally and as a team, but there was lots of good days as well. And the experience of it all, having played possibly, I think it was over 100 games for down between league and championship. You know, looking back now, that you know, it's something that, that to be proud of. And, and even the tough days, you know, maybe a wee bit tougher as a person, uh, how to deal with setbacks and stuff like that. So, you know, your your, your inter county career just flies past in, in, in no time. And, um, you know, I would say if the lads are on it now, just relish every moment because you just don't know what's around the corner or what's yeah. in, 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 in the line over the next year or two. Just let, live in the moment and really try and, and push on uh, this season. Yeah, that's one kind of point that came into my head there. Obviously, Darrow Handlin having to finish up playing football and obviously Kaku, club man, and like, he'd probably do anything to be out in the field to play. So would there be an element in your head, like obviously you see so many kind of lads dropping off and all kind of teams would switch maybe down, John, maybe in the last year or two. Like, would there be an element in your head where lads, like, you know, you know, buy in, can he keep playing for as long as you can? Because Darrow Handlin's a big case in point here. Yeah, no, absolutely. I know Dara, I know, I know Dara to speak to, and he's, he's a great fella. You know, he gave a lot to Kilku, but, he, you know, he, he would love to be involved still playing. But it, it does, it, it reiterates the fact that, you know, you just can't say, I'll give it, I'll wait the next year or the year after. You know, you just simply have to live in the moment because who knows what, what what's around the corner for anybody. Injury rise, personal circumstances could change, you know. So, you know, and I think that that, that is, a, a, there's not much coming from, from the camp at the minute, but I think the buy-in is, you know, if you're on board this year, you have to give it everything to, to try and be successful for, for, for down. And if, if that's the case, you know, that, that's a really good starting point. 
Mm, brilliant stuff, John. And I suppose obviously remark about yourself in the early noughties playing for town, um, and obviously great teams over the years. And we've seen obviously 2010 All Ireland final against Cork and later with talent. I suppose what was it like kind of playing in the early noughties? Yeah, listen, we, we we had lots of challenges too, and and we had bad days down in Division Three and, and losing championship games in in Sligo and, and bits and pieces. There was there was plenty of down days, but you know, plenty of great days as well in Clonus and. A, Look back at the 2003 first round Ulster final, where you know we came within a whisker of winning that title, lost the replay heavily, throwing on to win three All Irons in the back of it, and and down really disappeared. Didn't really be a threat until 2010 again, where, where we came with, with within inches of, of, of winning the All Iron title, basically from nowhere. You know, so yeah, great days, great memories from, from the players within every sort of team. You know, even players who maybe drift in and out, you would still have a link with them lads and. There's a core there who you would still be in touch with, and um, any time you would meet up with them, you would you would always reflect on, on on the good days more so than the bad days. But yeah, a big regret probably is that that 03 Ulster final and that a uh, 2010 All Ireland final. You know, just being so close on both days and uh, and missing out. But a uh, good days and, and and great memories. Mm, definitely, John. I suppose like a question I kind of always ask me former players like compared to now, like what, what we have now, the professionals going into the game and you know back in the early noughties. I suppose, John, what's the big differences do you feel compared to now back then? Because like when you look at the videos on YouTube, the great down teams, obviously dubs and everything. When you look back, like really enjoyable times. Look to be playing football, whereas now it just seems to be so tactical. If you get me. Yeah, no, I, I just, if I was playing now, I, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure what I'd be able to commit because it's like a full-time job at the minute. You know, you're probably yeah. something five, six nights a week, albeit the season is shortened. You know, it, it does be fairly, it will be read up in probably June or July this this year. But it's it's gone to an extent now where I feel maybe it's too much. But listen, it's a player from a different era. They're bought into it. They want to do everything they can. But I feel... In, in the 10 years I played, we, we had a good balance between, of course, we trained hard, we worked hard, but we uh, we, we, we had good times off the field as well. You know, we, we enjoy our victories and that created memories uh, as well. But nowadays, you know, the, the thought of maybe going for a few pints after a match is off the their, off their radar from the management side. And some players have no interest in it at all. They just want to go home and maybe post a picture of them drinking a cup of coffee and Instagram and that. So it really is a different era, you know, but uh, it, it's gone to a different level and if you're asking me if I was playing now would I be able to commit to that I'm just not so sure you know mm, Interesting stuff John I suppose like when you were playing the early 90s and like it did look like such all out attacking football obviously great battles with maybe the likes of Tyrone or Mao over the years John and some just terrific games and none of these kind of blankets or triple men marking double men marking and just enjoyable times yeah, it was. It was a different style of football, you know, and you were sort of back, you know, I played at stages in defence and you were sort of picking up your man. That was your man. You had no two or three men in there to help you out, you know. And yes, of course, tactics have changed and that and football has changed in general. But, you know, it, it was a wee bit more enjoyable to play. Uh, probably not so much if you were a defender, you were exposed one on one. But from an attacking point of view, and in 2010, we played some great attacking football because there was probably no real massive sweepers or blankets you know that sort of way so we were able to get the ball quick move it and uh, and be a real attacking force you know so yeah it, 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 it's gone till a, a different stage now but you know who knows it might come full circle again there's a lot of teams now really going for it and, and pressing kick outs and, and really going on, on the front foot from the off I suppose is there a sense maybe when you look back in the early noughties John like a sense of maybe oh, underachievement with that kind of down squad that you did have yeah, yep, yeah, th th there is, you know, as I said, we, we, we had good days, but we, we had more bad days and we were very inconsistent, you know, I remember it was 08, we beat Tyrone and Yuri after replay, mm. it went out the next day and got beat well by Armagh, you know, so there was like, it was up and down and of course you, you have regrets of going, we, we, we could achieve a wee bit more uh, with, with the players that we had at that, at that stage too, you know, but uh, there was reasons for that. Um, Everybody has to take personal responsibility. But as I say, we were lucky enough probably to have the good days that, that, that we did have. What was it like to kind of play against the likes of Armagh, Tyrone, Donegal, when the, the peak of the powers, and obviously we see so many clips and maybe COVID was a good chance to look back at some of them great games, John. What, what was it like to come up against some of them uh, gents and teams? Yeah, the, the Tyrone team in particular, you know, we come up against them for a few times. Uh, got there, beat them once in 08, as I said there, but they had our number on it on a, quite a few occasions. But, you know, like Sam Mulligan and Sean Cavanagh and Stevie O'Neill, like them boys were once in a generation footballers. And, 
you know, you, you tried what you could with them, but they just had that natural ability. There were so many of them. You know, if you kept one quiet, the other was going to have a good day. And, you know, that's their own team in particular. Uh, probably didn't play Armagh as much, but uh, from a footballing point of view, that thrown team of, of the Naughties was, was a real, real good team and full of quality quality footballers with, 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 with lots of natural talent. I suppose, obviously, John, like the role of full forward back then compared to what it is now, it, there's no, they've gone beyond the days where you can just stand inside, kick your seven, eight points or bag a goal or notch a goal, John. And nowadays you have to run back, you have to help support, play everything, John. So it's changed a lot in recent years. Yeah, it has. You know, you know, you, uh, a Gaelic footballer these days should be expected to play anywhere. You know, the versatility. So, you know, you could, as a full forward, you could find yourself back in the half back line. That's just the way it is. It's a real running game at times, and I, I still feel there is a role for that target man up front, and sometimes will still use it. Mm-hmm. But uh, it, it has evolved, and it, it's all down to probably power and pace and fitness now coming from for, for, from deep to create them opportunities. I suppose, John, like you were kind of remarking, like would you would you last in the the modern game and the way it's kind of gone off? So you were like uh, uh, the full forward in the All Ireland final against uh, Cork. So like like, the, like nowadays, like would you maybe enjoy playing the game the way it's gone? It's, it's hard to say. You know, it, it is hard to say. Uh, you know, at, at times I feel like it could have an impact, and then at times I feel I would I would be lost. You know, pace was never my big thing, but. I always felt my ball winning and my, and my possible accuracy was a strong point. But nowadays, it's so hard to, to find them inches of space inside. You know, it, it, it could be really difficult. So, yeah, if, if you were picking a position to play nowadays, it would probably be half back. Would, would be would be an ideal position where you have that sort of luxury to go forward, and then you have that a uh, bit of a uh, back up there. If you know you're getting caught, there's men going to be back there covering you as well. So, listen, it's very much a uh, went into a running game at times where. Half forwards and half backs are a are, are very versatile. You know, it's 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 hard to know. Some some players could could play in both positions. So was John, I have to ask you about obviously 2010. It was a great year for Down football, getting to an All Ireland final, and obviously kind of reminiscent maybe of the great uh, Down teams of the 90s. I suppose that year itself, 2010. John, magic magic stuff. Yeah, 2010, as I said earlier, uh, was definitely a standout year. We, we we probably had a good year. We started well under James. It was the first year bounce, probably, with a good Mechanic Cup, Cup, good National League, and things just carried in the championship. And then a couple of big wins over over Sligo and then Kerry and Kildare uh, created a real good buzz and good feel-good vibe around the squad. And again, in, in 2010, we, we had the best players playing. Down had the best players playing that year. There's no doubt about it. We had 25, 26 players who, who were the best players in down. So that was massive, you know. So obviously there is the big regret of, uh, you know, being 8-3 up, maybe heading into half time that day against Cork. And then we, we just lost our way a bit, you know, and Cork came back into it and got a lot of luck and a lot of maybe free kicks that Golding wouldn't have kicked in other days. He kicked them over. So still a chance to come back and win the game, you know. But 2010, it's a year you look back on with, with, with big uh, passion and pride but then there's always that wee tinge of regret going we, we came so close but yet so far I suppose John how like enjoyable is a year like 2010 because obviously like the whole of Down would have been following it and it was great to see like the siege mentality of Down getting to an all iron final like, I suppose how enjoyable was the whole journey itself yeah no it was you know and they are that the, sometimes you, you take a moment to think and it was good to think what at the time you don't realise it but when, when you're playing you're just so consumed by what's going on but a uh, Definitely the the sort of pride and passion around the supporters and for the young people in particular at that time, uh, it was great, you know, and it, it added a lot of uh, pride back back in the jersey too at that stage, you know. So it's been a, it's been twelve years ago now, and it's it's unreal to think it's been that long ago. But there's still people would 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 bring it up in conversation if you bumped in, you know. So in a way, that's good, you know. Of course, there was disappointment in losing, but people have fond memories of of, of that summer. There's no doubt. Have to talk <clears throat> talk to you about the All Ireland series. Obviously, it, it was such a dramatic kind of quarter final, semi final, and obviously the final itself. But like the All Ireland series itself, John, three unbelievable games of football. Yeah, yep. No, the the, the Kildare game in particular was was a real a real big day for Down. You know, uh, we we were probably going in on slight underdogs that day and rode our luck at times as well. But uh, I think that the, the natural football and ability and the strength of our bench uh, really, really showed through that day. And obviously the Kerry win again came from nowhere, but by far the better team that day as well. So there was a, a big belief and confidence around the squad that year that, that we could basically beat anybody on our day. Um, and, and and that was shown just unfortunately we, we, we fell short on, on, on the big day against an experienced court team. 
And was there a sense kind of maybe after that uh, 2000 win or 2010 All Ireland loss, John? Was that like maybe the end of the road for that particular kind of down team? Was that team building and building, or do you feel maybe that down team in 2011 or 12 could have got to an All Ireland final, or was that the chance? Uh, yeah, it's a fair question, and it's been one that's been fired about a fair bit. Uh, uh, probably we should have kicked on, you know. And 2011 was a strange year where everybody was back and keen to go at it again, and we we had a very decent national league, but. We, we had really eyed the, the Armagh game and the Ulster Championship uh, to, 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 to take a big scalp and have an impact on the Ulster Championship. But Armagh turned us over that day. And I just think after that day, things started maybe to, to go a bit flat, you know, and it was it was hard hard to get back up to the heights of the previous summer. Expectation was there. We were no longer under the radar. And it was really hard to, it was really hard to get things up and going. And 2011 was actually my last season on, on board. And I probably, I didn't commit to, 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 to it after that. And that was a personal choice. But, I just felt then after that a few other lads drifted off and it was it was just hard to get that buzz and that impact back. So I answer your question. Yes, we we probably should have uh, have kicked on after that, but there was various reasons that that didn't happen. And uh, 2010 obviously was the peak, but it, it was it was going to be hard to get to get back to that uh, back to that peak again. But there was reasons for it, but we we, we didn't achieve it. And after that, then it was. Since then, it's it's been it's been difficult, and the thought of even down getting near an All Ireland final in recent years would would never be thought of. But who knows? Springs, hope springs eternal, and the next two or three years, I feel that that down will be back, hopefully challenging in in, in some sorts. Mm. So, <clears throat> I suppose, John, like on the big days and the Ultra Championship games, and obviously the Ireland final, walking behind the Artane bands and like seeing the crowds looking out in the razzmatazz, the colours, the noise, like you know, that's what it's, it, it makes it all worth playing for. No, it is. You know, and they are the, the days you look back on. You, you see Clonus these days, and on a big and hot day, the, the the band, and you know, it was great to be involved in those in those times. And it's good to tell the children, listen, that I played out there. Though they might not believe you, like, but I, I played out there in those big days, and it was all part of it. And you, you know, even the All Ireland final with to play in an All Ireland final with Marty as well was really big. You know, particularly for my parents. You know, so we grew up watching the down team of the nineties and. Uh, to, to, to line out and, and walk behind the, the RTN boys band that day. At the time, you probably didn't appreciate it enough, but looking back now, it, it was a really special memory, yes. Absolutely, John. I suppose, obviously, we have to ask you about the air teams, the down teams of the early noughties, and we've seen kind of so many documentaries made about them since, and YouTube videos, and what a team, John. Of the early 90s? Yeah. Yeah, no, there's no doubt. Yeah, they, they, them boys are legends in down football, you know, and... Uh, although a lot of my pushing on now, you still bump into a lot of my around out and about the county, and all really, really nice fellas and really good crack, and you know, and they they'll always reflect fondly on their on their days, and they they inspire the generation. You know, there's no doubt that my generation where we come from, we, we were an off them men, and uh, they they inspired me to play for down. So I'll always be thankful for for them for that, and obviously the memories that they they give us growing up. As children, you know, to go on to Croke Park and go on to Clonus watching them on big days, it was really special, you know. So, great team, a different team, you know, a different era as well, you know. But they were all fantastic footballers, big men who, who really knew how to play the game. And obviously, they had a top manager in, in Pete McGrath as well. I suppose, John, like how, like I probably remarked this a couple of minutes ago, but like how important is it for, you know, to, for, to see a strong down again? I know the right men's in place now, but like the teams of the 90s, the 2010 All-Ireland appearance, like like it is so vitally important that, you know, we, you know, we get back to seeing a good down. No, it is, and particularly inside the county too, you know, you want the younger generation to have something to look up to, and that maybe hasn't happened in recent years, and that's probably why maybe talent has drifted, but you know, if a down team's going well, the, the public will bag it and the young people will want to be involved, want to wear a down jersey. And it's all part of that circle, you know. So, yeah, it's it's so important. And probably for, from an Ulster pers perspective as well, to have down, a strong down team uh, competing. Uh, because people know that when, when down get down to Croke Park, they tend to have that wee bit of swagger and confidence and tend to play well. So, uh, I, th I think it's important. And it's it's it's, it's overdue now for, for Down to come back and, and really have an impact in the in the Ulster Championship and, and, and beyond. Ten years, John, at anything, any walk of life, or be it work or be it sports, I suppose, like the ten years, what what highlights are we talking about or how, how much you enjoy it, I suppose? Of the, of the down. past for, for Down, yeah. No, it's, yeah. it's, there's been plenty of, there's been a couple of Ulster final appearances, you know, and, uh, 
but it, there was disappointments along the way. But it, it it very much leaves you know it, it leaves a positive impression in in your time, and uh, I, I'll always be thankful for 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 them ten years per, personally as well. You know. Mm, definitely, John. Definitely. I suppose overall, do you, do you feel maybe the game is in a good place at the minute? Obviously, you know, Kerry did get their hands on the 2022 All Ireland Championship, so generally, you know, Ulster's obviously in a very good place at the minute. Thank God. So, like, generally, are you happy with the way they, the way the game's going? I think so. Yeah, I, th- I think last year was a really good championship. You know, it, it obviously had its critics because it finished up so early. But you look back to some of them games: Armagh, Galway, Derry. Th- th- there were so many new teams came, had a go at it, and obviously had Kerry back on top. Uh, it was good to see Dublin's dominance being broke a wee bit as well. Possibly, although they will be back. So, I think there's going to be five or six teams that are really going to be eyeing up uh, a realistic chance of winning the, the, the All Ireland this year, you know. So I think you know, football is, is in a good place, you know, and there will always be challenges along the way. But uh, I, I, I hope 2023 uh, is, an, is another big season ahead from, from an inter county perspective. Mm, I suppose what can I ma- have you made of the recent news in recent weeks with the likes of Paul Mannion, Jack McCaffrey coming back for the dubs, and obviously David Clifford's just lord in football at the minute. So, you know, it's an exciting year ahead. So it is, it's going to be exciting, you know, the dubs obviously will be hurting and they will come back and they, they have that talent pool and that numbers they picked from that no other county really has, you know, so I, I would say they, they will not be far away this year, but Kerry with, with Clifford alone are always going to be a threat, you know, he, he to me is the most outstanding Gaelic football I've seen in my lifetime, you know, and he's, he's only young yet, so there's a lot more to come from him as well. Obviously, Ulster perspective, John. Obviously, Derry did come out on top, and obviously, Rory Gallagher uh, leading them to uh, like an Ulster championship and probably out of nowhere, really, John. So it's it's it is really positive to see such a strong Ulster where anyone could really win. Yeah, no, it's it's going to be wide open again. You're going to have your top three or four, but on their day, any team and and Dan will be in that mix too, where they feel they can cause an upset and. It's all about building momentum, you know, but the Ulster Championship will remain the most competitive championship of all the provincial games. Uh, and it, it always creates a shock or two and it always creates a couple of massive games. Uh, and also the Ulster final, obviously, is always one of the biggest games of the year. Yeah, really, really taking the tra- uh, chairs. I don't probably only for Ulster, the provincials would probably be a bit of a, a dead duck, I suppose, John. I suppose what maybe, as you're after kind of saying, David Clare, it's exciting, but maybe what three, four, five players are you kind of paying in to watch these days? Yeah, I like Shane McGuigan from Derry. He's he's a real class act. And uh, Comer from Galway, I'm a big fan of his, his as well, his power and strength. You know, I like him. And, and Brian Hurley from Cork, I'm a, a fan of him, him as well. So, listen, there's, there's lots of talent out there, lots of big players scattered throughout Ireland. But those, those three three would be maybe top three, maybe outside of down at the minute. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be looking out for it. Good stuff, John. I suppose, like in maybe in the last year or two, there's been congresses, there's been change, there's been call for changes. And obviously, John, you've been involved in the game for kind of so long. Like if you were maybe like coming up with a few solutions or any kind of theories maybe for the GA, or like are you happy with the way everything's been run at the minute or was there any changes you kind of like to make? It's it's hard to say. You know, this new system with the with the format uh, of the of the four groups of four will, will be a test this year. Now, you know, and it, we'll see we'll see what the imp- impact it has. But I think in general, you know, I'm I'm, I'm pretty happy. Possibly the standard of referee and at times could maybe improve. You know, and that's maybe not always the referee's fault. It's it's possibly down to how maybe they're trained and how much respect they're given. So that that could be something that that, that could possibly be worked on. But overall, I, th- I think the GA is in a good place at the minute. Hmm. Good stuff, John. Good stuff. I suppose looking back, John, uh, who would be the best player you played with and the toughest player you played against? A uh, best player I played with, tough enough. A, a fair, fair few greats I have played with, but probably the one that stands out is Benny Coulter. You know, Benny uh, is a down legend, and on his day, was the best player in Ireland. He was unmarkable, real goal threat, real talent in the air. Could could play probably from anywhere from midfield up, you know. So he probably suffered a bit and he played in down teams probably who, who weren't maybe playing at the powers he should have been. But I think the run in 2010 really showed what what he was capable of, you know. So a real talent and a real goal getter, you know, and somebody that down could maybe be doing with uh, in, in this year as well. Uh, Thomas' opponent, uh, there, there's been a few... I always look back to Mark and Tommy Freeman from Monaghan uh, in the early 90s in Casement Park one day, the sheer pace of him. I, I couldn't cope with him at all. You know, a real a real live wire and a really good player. So I had plenty of big battles with plenty of big players, but he, he's the one that, that always stands out as the most difficult opponent. Last question, John. I suppose what kind of advice would you maybe give to maybe a young kind of John Clark trying to make the break on to a county team, either their club team or, you know, general life advice? 
just work hard, you know, and just live in the moment. Don't think what's going to happen in next year or the year after. Just really give it a go uh, in, the, in the present and work hard at your training and just uh, learn from the, the mistakes you make in games and don't let defeats get you too down and really don't get too carried away with, with, with big wins and big success. Keep grounded, but uh, basically just live in the moment, work hard and enjoy it too because it's only a short, short span. Good stuff, John. Good stuff. Well, John Clark, thanks a million for joining me this week. And of course, this podcast is brought to you by orgaretch.com. Use the code JMAC podcast to get 15% off on the website. Mr. Clark, the very best luck for the year ahead. And I hope it's a fruitful year for uh, down football, but just not against Calvin if he's come up, come up against us. <laughs> thanks, John. Yep. All the best. Cheers, John. Talk to you.